Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report. So, Activision Blizzard, they have done it again. And while today's story is kicked off by a recent move that the company has made, it does speak to a far larger issue within our industry. Purchasing a game used to be a fairly simple affair with one's primary concern being, is the game good? And then I suppose, how much does it cost? Well, as time has went on, it's no longer that simple. Average consumers now have to perform an analysis of a game's business model before they decide if they want to purchase it. Ultimately, the business models of many games are highly tied to their core design and the balance of their pacing. Many decisions within game development are actually dictated by business model now. So that means what happens when a game's business model is so nasty that players decide to opt out of the game. Well, that's when you have Star Wars Battlefront 2, a game that did shift copies, but far fewer than expected by about a million copies within its initial window, with its performance being below that of its predecessor, even though Battlefront 2 was, by all regards, really a better game in its core design with more fleshed out content, as an example, having a key feature like space battles that its predecessor did not have. EA blamed its underperformance on the loot box controversy. Then another game that suffered was Shadow of War, with its business model being damaging to the core design pillar of that game to the point where it really did just compromise it entirely, pretty much ruining the Nemesis system. Again, leading to a game that sold poorly and suffered in reviews. So, it's time for some roleplay, okay? You are the living human equivalent of a stock image, and you want that sweet, sweet, what I'm going to call non-value-add money, i.e. money that is earned by things that don't really add value to the customer. You've looked around the market and you've seen that your friends at Warner and EA have both failed pretty hard after a big push with those games, partially because of consumer rejection. So what do you do? Do you realign your business model around the market pressures that consumers are exerting on you by voting with their wallets and voting, uh, you know, opting out of these games? I mean, you could, but how about this? You could just deceive them, right? Because here's the thing, my stock image business person friend, you need that free to play money and you also need five to eight million sales at 60 bucks. What good is a cake that goes uneaten? So, you know, why not launch your game at full price? But here's uh, here's where you really stick it to the people over at EA and Warner. You launch the game at full price, but not with its full business model implemented. Think about it, it's genius. You get to sell your game for 60 bucks, you get all those fat stacks, and then a month or two later, you release a patch that implements the business model into the game in its full glory. Or maybe you roll the business model out over four months. And here's why it's such an effective move, because by that time, the sting of the original purchase has really left the customer. They don't feel it anymore. And I mean, anyway, like these big games, they typically come out around Christmas or, you know, just before that, in a time where there's a lot of competition in the market. So your microtransactions are then competing against full-fledged games. So, um, you know, why not shift it down the line a little bit? So people, you know, they've recovered from the Christmas hit. They no longer feel the $60 that they put into your game. Uh, so, you know, it's not like you're losing that much money in the people who have also stopped playing your game because the people who came in for launch and only played it for a month, well, they're fair weather fans. They're not the people who would partake in microtransactions anyway. So by waiting a few months, you don't really lose that many microtransaction people. What an absolute win-win. Well, I mean, at least for our conjured up stock image business person, for customers, it's a pretty damn bad practice, isn't it? Business models impact game mechanics, with the level of impact seemingly only increasing year over year. As we see the encroachment of that, we also then have seen the worrying trend of publishers hiding their intentions during the run-up to a game's full launch for full RRP, and then maybe a few months later, that's when they maybe discount the game and cram it full of microtransactions. They get people to buy a full game, and then, they monetize their superfans through microtransactions over the full life of the title. Now, in principle, I can live with a cash shop existing in a game, but, you know, only some games, maybe like free-to-play. But the thing is, that's just me personally. What's more important is the ability for customers to make up their own minds on that, to make their own judgment call, and do that on a per-game basis. And that means that when a publisher withholds full information of a business model, it robs the consumer of vital information at the same time that the publisher is asking for pre-order, and it makes it impossible for customers to know if the overall game is something that they would want to support and buy into. Is it illegally deceptive? No, probably not. And perhaps that being illegal would be an overstep. Maybe it would prevent, say, a double A team from pivoting their game's business model, maybe making it free to play to save their company, right? But at least in how these triple A's are seeming to do it, yeah, it is kind of deceptive. 
So this topic recently has came up again because of Call of Duty Black Ops 4, a game that has been a bright spot in Activision Blizzard's portfolio. When the game launched on the 12th of October 2018, it did not have a microtransaction store, but they did say that the store would be added later on. And since then, we've seen a slow rollout that has just got increasingly worse with the publisher dipping into just about every business model in the book. So one month after launch in November, an update added the Call of Duty points uh, microtransaction system. So this was essentially a bunch of systems um, I mean, that you'd almost need a master's degree in to understand. I mean, it's not like Warframe where you need several PhDs to understand how that game works, but it is quite a lot of systems. So Call of Duty points are the currency and they work for um, all of three of the game modes, for Blackout, for Zombies, and for the standard multiplayer. You might be wondering what they're used for. Well, you can directly purchase black market tiers you might be wondering, what the hell is a black market here? Well, essentially, it's a battle pass for Black Ops 4. So on launch, people noticed you would level up this battle pass, but it was very, very slow. And that, of course, made a lot of sense when the store dropped, and it turned out that you could directly purchase levels of, of, of that, and that would get you the accompanying cosmetic rewards. Now, at the launch of the store, progressing through all of the tiers with money would have cost you £130. Now, look, they would not let you do that if they, you know, didn't want some people to do that. Now, most reasonable people will not do that, but payment opportunities like this specifically cater to whales. And I mean, I'm thinking of, say, Mass in Mass Effect 3, the developers said they actually had one guy who spent 15 grand on boxes. Yeah, 15 grand. And that's who that sort of thing caters to. Anyway, so they essentially have a full monetized battle pass model in their buy-to-play full-priced game with a, um, you know, the, that has a season pass. And then on top of that, you could also get special orders. These are basically challenges that you buy and then complete through gameplay, earning you a cosmetic reward. Then, I believe a month after that, they added Blackjack Store, and this has allowed for the direct purchase of cosmetic items. So right now we're at f uh, three free-to-play business models already in the one game. How exciting. Now, of course, we can't forget their second buy-to-play business model, which is the season pass that's happening on top of all of this. Now, they seem to have wanted to treat this game like a live service, but with the full monetization of both buy-to-play and free-to-play, because the live service is something that you buy into by purchasing, um, well, the game and then the season pass. Now, this led to early frustrations with many people buying the full season pass and then having a relatively small amount of initial content, uh, and that led to discontent at the start of 2019. So it's not ideal, but things actually do get a bit worse because the cosmetics store really did turn into a laughing stock with the addition of a $1 red dot. Not a red dot site, just the dot. It then turned into a thrillingly creative smiley face for $1.99. Of course, Smiley red face dots are something you would just unlock in previous games, but no, not in this one. And where does this all bring us to? Well, it brings us to the current day and loot boxes, because yes, fully monetized loot boxes are now also in this game. Keen to implement seemingly every business model that exists, <laughs> Activision Blizzard, in their grand heist update, added the ability to purchase loot boxes that contain cosmetic items. Yeah, they called it Grand Heist. I'm sure Bobby got a little bit excited when that bit of paper came across his desk. Anyway, so loot boxes are not new to the Call of Duty franchise. They were in Black Ops 3, they were in Infinite Warfare, and World War II. Now, the worst example of them is Black Ops 3, because they pretty much were pay to win. They actually contained weapon variants that had different stats, and you could just flat out get them through the uh, loot boxes, which really was an absolutely disgusting thing to have happen in a skill-based multiplayer shooter. Now, the Black Ops 4 loot boxes are not that bad, they only contain cosmetics, but on the whole, it is just insane how deeply monetized every aspect of this game is. By default, the game costs you $60, but if you want the full experience, it's another $50, I believe, for the season pass. Once you've put in all that money, you are then faced with slow black market progression that is essentially slowed down to incentivize spending Call of Duty points on buying tiers. Now look, ultimately, if they did not want you to spend money in this stuff, they wouldn't let you spend money in this stuff. They create the problem so they can sell you the solution. And at this stage, I really do think the pay to skip argument for time limited players just does not hold water anymore. You then have the game store badgering you all the time and let us not forget Activision Blizzard's patent for matchmaking based on increasing exposure to store items that you don't already own, something which no doubt we'll see in a future title. Plus, of course, you've got the paid contracts. 
Does that feel like a premium experience, all of those things, and the loot boxes as well? No, it feels like a cash shop free-to-play game. Imagine paying $110 to start playing a free-to-play title. That's insane, but that is what they've been able to do, and their bait and switch business model with that further monetization is what allows them to do it. They want people to fully buy in, ideally pre-order with the season pass bundle, not really knowing the full extent of the business model. And then once that purchase has left the customer's memory, once time has passed, they then want to rush in with all the free-to-play feeling things. And really, they've shockingly advanced it over time, to the stage where it is just beyond the pale. Apex Legends and Fortnite both have lighter touch monetization systems, and they cost nothing to play. This is a trend that will no doubt continue. Black Ops 4 has already made the lion's share of the money that it can make from its box copy sales. So now we see them transition over to, um, well, really from a buy-to-play game to a free-to-play model. It will probably do very well for Activision Blizzard, and I would be on the lookout for these tactics in the future. I mean, there could potentially even be a small-scale version of this with Anthem, because its store has released in a very interesting way, only having epic quality items, but no masterwork items. Now, the epics seem reasonably ish priced in comparison to the $20 that people feared, but we still don't know what a masterwork skin will cost. That is withheld information. And really, that's it. It's just the withholding of information so that customers are not fully equipped to make purchase decisions because the more a customer knows, the more opportunities they have to not opt in to buying your game and uh, the less these companies are able to totally cram every aspect of their game with these different business models. And the thing that I'd really end with saying is that for a free-to-play game, a lot of that stuff's kind of fine, right? But for a buy-to-play game, it really erodes the mastery loop. The idea of completing a challenge in the game and then getting a weapon, skin, or something like that for completing the challenge. That's now something that you buy with Call of Duty points. By default, that's something that would be in most games for free. So essentially, the regular rewards of games like this are now being ripped out and turned into a live service microtransaction-based model. And I really do feel like that is eroding the quality of the gaming experiences that we have now and no doubt will get worse for the future. The only way to stop this is to vote with our wallets. And the thing is, that's going to mean waiting and not purchasing games at launch because as it turns out, we cannot trust the launch version of games anymore. It really is that simple. So there you go. That's my thoughts on this uh, worrying topic for our industry. Let me know what you think down below. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more content. I actually think we're going to have daily content for the entire week and like two videos today. So um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty exciting time. Anyway, yeah, be sure to check all that out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.